I'm Shane Jolly and welcome to Luxury Escapes, a new television series that takes viewers on a journey to the world's best holidays. There's a city that's growing faster than anywhere else on Earth and it's become one of the world's best playgrounds for luxury, fun and ultra-modern architecture. Here, hotels rate up to seven stars and shopping is considered sport. Welcome to Luxury Escapes and one of the world's best holidays can be found right here in this cosmopolitan mecca of Dubai. <laughs> Dubai is the ultimate example of urban evolution. Its rapid rise as a truly global city only began around 45 years ago when oil-rich deposits were discovered off its coastline. Today, it's a mix of futuristic buildings, fantastic hotels and experiences, and attracts nearly 15 million visitors every year, making it an ideal destination for travellers. So what do you think is a great luxury escape here in Dubai? The luxury, it just depends people what they want to feel like, you know? You can either ride camel or ride Ferrari. My luxury escape begins at one of Dubai's biggest icons, the world-famous Atlantis. This 1,500-room mega-hotel is typical of Dubai's intention to show the world just how serious it is about making this city the world's greatest tourist hub. From its palatial 924 square metre Royal Bridge Suite, complete with private butler and 16 seat dining space, right through to a range of more affordable rooms, guests here enjoy views of the Arabian Sea, along with bedrooms, bathrooms and furnishings that deliver unsurpassed levels of luxury. And they also have access to its 17 hectare water park featuring the famous Aquaconda, the world's longest water slide. Everything about the Atlantis is big. Named after the mythical city that sunk into the ocean, it only seems fitting that one of its greatest attractions involves an abundance of marine life. Well, there's not too many hotels around that boast having their own aquarium, but Atlantis does. Now, Rob, tell us a little bit about this aquarium. Sure, yeah, it's one of the biggest open air aquariums in the world. It's 11.5 million litres. And as you can see, it's, a, it's all natural sunlight. It's all natural seawater as well. For our animals, this is as good as it gets. And there's lots of fish in there, so... I'm... There's lots of fish, yeah. We've got 65,000 uh, animals in there all together. Sharks, fish, stingrays. 65,000? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Rob, what happens if the, the, the poor fish get sick? We have a, a fish hospital here, private, private hospital for fish. It is? Yes, it is, yeah. Wow. Well, it, it provides a, a couple of different roles, actually. The sick animals is one, if we're bringing in new animals. And also, we have a lot of our babies in there. So we've had, especially this year, we've had a bumper year for babies. Uh, Something in the water, maybe? Something in the water, <laughs> yeah. It's not just one of the world's largest aquariums that the Atlantis offers our travellers. There's something for everyone here, from shopping for that special gift, parks for the kids, and Luxury Escapes is the best deals around. If you want to visit Dubai, go to luxuryescapes.com or text Dubai on 0476 857 406. As well as heralding the new, Dubai still holds a special place for its past. And this can be experienced in the fascinating old Dubai. Where do these spices come from? Do they actually come from here? Some of them. Wow. It's incredible. With its markets, also known as souks, my guide Sarah explained that the Emiratis traded herbs, spices and other produce in the same fashion for thousands of years and used Dubai Creek as a trading port for just as long. And it was one of these traditions that were the inspiration for the city's magnificent new opera house. Based on the shape of the traditional fishing boats of Dubai, the opera house's definitive shape reflects the innovation of a modern city that still has affection for its past. 
The building, when you, when you look at it from the outside, is a dhow, an Arabian sailing vessel. Yes. In Sydney, of course, you have magnificent sails in the, in the harbour. Here we have the rest of the boat, if yes. you like. <laughs> Here is something that connects the history of Dubai, the, the amazing maritime tradition, and that's what's reflected in our uh, exterior design. When you look inside, you have a lot of the, the traditional facets of a, a contemporary theatre, the kind of red seating that is so familiar, a red yes. curtain. Yes. But around us, the walls, we have an Arabic uh, mashrabiyah effect, just reminding people of where we are in the world. And yes. that although this is theatre, although we can stage great musicals, and operas and ballets with a Western heritage, we are in the Middle East, and it's important that we set our position in that context. Coming up, we visit the exotic Arabian desert, then head to Australia's cultural capital in Melbourne. One of the things I was really looking forward to when in Dubai was a visit to the Arabian Desert. This is how Dubai used to be and is a complete contrast to the hustle and bustle of the city centre. And I'm doing it in style in a Range Rover from Platinum Heritage Luxury Tours and Safaris. Well, if you didn't want to opt for one of the more plush Range Rovers, for the more adventurous of you, you can always go back to the old retro Land Rover. For my Dubai desert experience, I'm visiting an exclusive conservation area and meeting my guide Basim, who is a keen advocate for keeping the area as pristine as possible. I was going to say, Basim, it's not often you come out into the middle of the desert and see something, and like, see something like this. And the lake next to us is one of the projects uh, uh, that the management of the conservation decided to uh, uh, bring to life. So they're creating a healthy environment for the birds and the animals to stay longer and yes. to have a better chance in surviving. We bring our guests here inside the Dubai Desert Conservation to show them the wildlife, explain to them how the Bedouin in the old days managed to find their way around and survive. Basim explained the Bedouins were a nomadic people and had trained the Emirati national bird, the falcon, as hunters for their food for generations. The falcon is a revered animal in the UAE and the best birds can fetch up to as much as 250,000 US dollars. In fact, these birds are so well cared for that if they're taken to other countries by aeroplane, they're given their very own seat in business or first class. Thank you. Yes, welcome once again. Thank you, Hayes. Thank you very much. <laughs> My arm's getting a bit heavy of this guy. If you want, I can take him away <laughs> okay. from you. Ben is the Platinum Heritage resident falcon expert and is passionate about these magnificent birds. He also has a bit of a soft spot for the very chilled Ziggy. He's uh, one of about 40 birds we have, 40 falcons we have. Um, he's a Saker falcon, an Aplomado Saker to be exact. Right. The falcon is your fastest creature on the planet. Yeah. There was a female peregrine called Frightful. She reached 389 kilometers per hour. Wow. It's the world record fastest animal on wow. the planet. Wow. So what they'll do is they'll get really nice up and high, circle and then stoop down on their prey. And with these long talons here, either just hit the prey or grab it and fly off somewhere safe to eat it. Would you like to hold him again as your arm rested? Uh, my, my other one's okay. Oh, so I... My short time in the desert had already offered up some magical moments. And the next morning was just as special. It's time to see Dubai from the sky. This is absolutely picturesque and amazing and a once in a lifetime opportunity. But um, it's a long way down. I have to admit it, I'm not brilliant with heights, but being in this amazing bloom and under the guidance of Andrew, I was soon able to relax and enjoy the magical views this incredible experience offers the luxury escaper. What I can't believe up here is just how quiet and serene it is. It's, it's amazing. And you don't feel the wind because we move with the wind. A second ago, we're at 4,000 feet. Are we? 4,000 yeah. feet above the Dubai Desert. Andrew wanted to be a balloonist since he was six and his passion for it has taken him all over the world. I've flown in around 50 countries. So I drove actually from New Zealand to, to Europe and okay. I've been flying in nearly every country along the way. And what do you think is most unique about Dubai? It's very uh, multicultural, that's for sure. So there's something for everyone here. 
but also it's impressive that this has just popped out out of nowhere you know 40 50 years ago there was nothing here from the balloon you're able to see just how immense the saudi desert is as well as being home to the bedouin tribes the 65,000 square kilometer desert contains a surprising amount of wild animals and plant life and although it's hard to tell from so high up there are approximately 37 different types of sand that make up its composition. This is a premium luxury experience, well worth doing while you're in Dubai. Make sure you get up here, it's absolutely sensational. It's fair to say that most travellers are spoiled for choice when it comes to great hotels in Dubai and it seems no expense or detail has been spared. This is certainly the case at the Madinat Jumeirah, taking almost three years to build and consisting of three separate resorts. It has its own authentic recreation of an ancient Arabian marketplace. Over 40 restaurants and bars, a convention center, two grand ballrooms, spas, multiple swimming pools, and two kilometer private beach. On top of all that, it has a waterway replicating a Venice canal. Well, Madinat Jumeirah is set on 40 hectares of beautiful landscape tropical gardens. And I have to say, this looks like something out of an Arabian film set. Now, I've got Captain Ashok here. Captain, how many boats are there all up? We have uh, 40 boats. 40 boats? Like, these are like traditional Arabic boats, like they used to transport um, in uh, the old Arabian times. The beautiful waterways stretch over 3.5 kilometres and there's plenty to see along the way. It's a magnificent view also of the... Yeah, yeah, this is Burj Al Arab, Tower of the Arabs. Burj means the tower. The tower. Iconic landmark. Yeah, very much so. Imagine one thing, you're in any job, you'll get bored, yeah? Sitting somewhere or, you know, doing one thing, one place. This is I'm doing 10 years and every day I come with a new excitement. You do? You know, of course, because it's 4 kilometers, 3.7 kilometers area is so beautiful. Yeah. And the most important thing is you're meeting every day, every time new people. New people. I'm very envious. And when, when you're here, like you stay here for a week or, or, or any number of days, you don't go out. You just feel you have been to something else, some other world, you know. If you want to visit Dubai, go to luxuryescapes.com or text Dubai on 0476 857 406. This is a banquet. Well, <laughs> this is what we offer our guests. Wow. What have we got here, Basin? We have some aubergine with the cheese and the olive oil and vinegar for touche. We have hummus and we have the kibbe, which is a meatball. We always cook it on site to serve it as fresh as possible. Dubai is also renowned for its vibrant food culture. Traditional Arabic food is popular amongst travelers and locals alike, but the city's rapid cosmopolitan growth has meant a demand for more modern cuisines and leading international chefs like Gregoire Berger, a global finalist in the 2016 Young Chef of the Year Awards, are also in demand. It's like uh, nowhere in the world. So to satisfy everybody, it's take a lot of effort and a lot of creativity. The best right. that the, the world can offer, we can bring it here and we, we work on it. It's not only the traditional food of Dubai that has seen influences from other regions of the world. Arabia may be the birthplace of coffee, but it's countries like Australia that have made it the morning ritual it is today. With Dubai being almost 85% expats, I was delighted to hear that a little slice of Melbourne could be found right in the centre of Dubai. It's, it's funny, Dubai is actually quite similar to Melbourne in, in a lot of ways where you've got a real melting pot of a lot of different cultures over here, um, as you do in uh, Melbourne. With that, you've got a lot of different cuisines that people love to eat. Um, you know, you see all the cafe menus in Melbourne and yeah, you know, they're, they're, they're getting inspiration from all over the world. So we just found that, you know, that same style of, of menu and dining and, 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 and taste for coffee and food was, was very similar in Dubai. What's so unique, do you think, about the sum of this? Well, I think the fact that we bring it all under one roof is, is fantastic. Yeah. So we can control the whole process by doing that. I've had a one coffee already, but I <laughs> might just have a second. No worries, we're <laughs> going to get you that right now. The experiences I've had in Dubai will stay with me forever. And for me, it's definitely a world's best holiday. Dubai is proud of its traditions, but willing to embrace the new. 
with the insistence of a certain Dubai expat wanting me to fill him in on certain coffee scene, I'm heading to my next luxury escape. We're in my hometown of Melbourne. Not only is it a leading coffee destination, but it boasts more restaurants per capita than anywhere else. It has five major sporting events held here each year, a vibrant arts culture and proximity to Victoria's wineries. Now this place has been voted the world's most livable city for the past five years running. And call me a little biased, but I think it's the ideal setting for a luxury escape. Like Dubai, Melbourne is relatively young and throughout its history has been a popular destination for people from every continent wanting to make the city their home. This multicultural heritage has given Melbourne its own identity within Australia and is certainly one of the reasons I love living here so much. The best way to start a luxury escape in Melbourne is with a good breakfast. Jason Camillo and his team have won the esteemed Gourmet Traveller Best Breakfast Award two years running. So the Grand Hyatt is the perfect place to get it. More people are eating breakfast out than any other meal. I mean, why, why is that the case? Well, I think in Melbourne it's about the, the culture and yeah. it's about the coffee culture and then coffee goes with breakfast, but then people want to be eating healthy as well, so they're looking for, for healthy options. Jason, is there a popular or signature dish that you, you find most people eating here? Yeah, well, in our display cabinet, we have uh, some lovely air-dried Wagyu from the Gippsland, aged for three months. I love to, to uh, prepare that with some local buffalo mozzarella, a little bit of yellingo olive oil, some cracked pepper, oh, Murray River sea salt, amazing. and then we'll get some locally grown baby herbs, and we'll just pick them and just sprinkle them over the top. And that's beautiful. Sounds incredible. Another unique facet of Melbourne's identity is its art scene. Melbourne is literally an urban canvas, with many of its laneways depicting the talents of both local and overseas artists. There are also so many fantastic galleries here, and walking art tours are the latest craze to sweep this city. So, Benny, where's our first tour? Where do we stop first? We're going to the Nicholas Building in um, Swanson Street. Predominantly milliners and designers right. and um, visual artists. Bernie runs Walk to Art, a wonderfully eclectic tour that showcases local artists and their current work. So Bernie, what are some of your passions here in Melbourne? Well, for me it's about all the little hidden places. So it's the places without any signage, it's the places that you really don't know about, it's these laneways, that sense of discovery, that's what I love about Melbourne. And if you don't go down the laneways, then you won't discover. True. The laneways and plenty of other parts of Melbourne offer fantastic shopping too. So you'll always look your best for the night ahead. Lume Restaurant may not be hiding in a laneway, but its unassuming entrance certainly hides the excellence of what's inside. It has a reputation as one of Melbourne's best, and head chef Sean Quaid is constantly experimenting with all types of food. I don't want to say a signature dish, but it's probably everyone's favourite. Uh, it's called Pearl on the Ocean Floor. Right. We've got some beautiful uh, Sydney rock oysters, native Australian oysters from uh, Clyde River, lots of seaweed. It's basically like a seaweed salad that we do. We've got about well, we've got eight different types of seaweed that I picked very, very early this morning. You actually did that yourself? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So what time were you up this morning, Sean? Uh, I got up about 3.30. Right, nice. And, you know, out in the dark with my torch. That's called dedication to the cause, yeah. I think. <laughs> Very much so. East of the, sun. the laneways are home to some great music too. The Paris Cat has been at the forefront of the Australian jazz scene for the past 10 years and is still nurturing new and established talent alike. I think Melbourne is the music capital of Australia. I'll agree with you, but you said it first, so okay. you'll get in trouble. <laughs> There's a big creative scene in Melbourne. Melbourne is very special and certainly recognised on an international level. Also, everything in Melbourne is quite close together. If you want to go someplace for dinner and then go somewhere for drinks, it's all within walking distance. Absolutely. There's a lot to enjoy. After a day of music, food and art, what better way to finish it off than with a nightcap? 
The brilliant Ruko Bar pays homage to Melbourne's art scene and like the cocktails they serve here, it's a perfect mix of art and atmosphere. The sculptures that adorn the bar are the work of local artist Bruce Armstrong. The way these evolved for me is that I worked in with the architect with what he'd had in mind with the design. So tried to make them quite contrasty between one and the other mm, so that you, you end up looking up and down at them in the same way as you do uh, with people in a bar yeah. or at a party. All our guests always ask about the, the sculptures and we just created a little story around them and created three signature cocktails. This one is our big favourite and it's called Incognito and it's a vodka-based cocktail with the bison grass flavoured. Okay, great. Some lime juice, a bit of simple syrup, then a bit of rosemary. So we're gonna spray some absinthe. You're gonna light it up and then you pour it over the glass. Wow. If you want to visit Melbourne, go to luxuryescapes.com or text Melbourne on 0476 857 406. Whether you're wanting an authentic experience in the desert or to lose yourself in laneways covered in art, Dubai and Melbourne have much to offer the luxury traveller. Thanks for watching. I hope you can join me next time to see more of the world's best holidays on Luxury Escapes.